All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. Welcome to episode 391 of the KISS FAQ Podcast. I'm your host. Well, actually, I'm not really a host when there's only two of us, is it? It's, uh, we're alone. We think we're alone now. Uh, just Ken and myself. <laughs> Everyone else is AWOL this week. Uh, you know what? Life comes first at all times. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty quiet time right now in the KISS Army. It's the doldrums of the year. There's not much announced. Well, there was an announcement today when you think of it. Uh, yeah, there's going to be a delay for some vinyl product that there were pre-orders from at the end of last year. Rock and roll over and music from the elder packages. Check your emails if you ordered those. It's understandable. Before you get upset and outraged, it's outside the control of Gene and Paul. They have nothing to do with it. Don't blame them. Don't blame Doc, don't blame Universal. Don't blame Kiss Online. Don't blame me. I'm the messenger. Don't shoot me. Um, it's it simply it simply is that everything is messed up and delayed. Delays are happening and timelines are getting stretched. I'm waiting on the release of a super deluxe of Slaughter's Fear No Evil. And mm. I know it's going to be worth the wait. I have no problem for that. I'm waiting on the release of the two new rockologist pressings of Peter yeah. Chris's Out of Control and Let Me Rock You. Those are shipping on February the 7th, not January the 10th as uh, was originally hoped. Check your emails. If you purchase them, you will have gotten the emails. If you have not gotten emails and you purchase them, follow up with the email address that was included in your order. You know, don't jump to conclusions. Don't start ranting. It's not a conspiracy. It simply is shit happens. You waiting on any of these? Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, the kiss stuff, definitely. I mean, you tell me you mean Gene and Paul aren't putting the little biscuits in the on the the press there to get? No, you know, they're, they're not sitting there they're licking they're stamps and putting them on and the stickers. Paul, putting Paul's stickers handing on one the, for because Gene would do oh. the stamps, right? Gene would have yeah, to do with the, the stamps. Stuff, yeah, it makes yeah. sense, right? So, oh, okay, they're not this. Well, yeah, we can't blame them. Um, but yeah, I got that email today. Um, I'm not surprised by it. Everything is is yeah, everything uh, is behind, and it's definitely vinyl. Um, and then, yeah, the other stuff, the Peter Chris stuff, I'm waiting on that too. Um, I did say on, an, on, a, I think it was Kiss My Wax or one of those, uh, they were talking about it. Some people were complaining about, you know, b being, you know, the Kiss stuff's going to be late again or whatever. Um, I said, you know what they should do? Kiss, the Kiss Online should overestimate their, you know, shipping date, meaning, put it out a month later than they really expect it, right? And put it out at a later date, a month later, and then if they do get it, you know, earlier, and they ship it earlier, it may, you know, they look like, whoa, hey, they're doing a great job. Um, but, <laughs> but knowing how things are going, it would probably still be late, you know, yep. the way things are going these days, so. Yeah, I don't, I don't see how they could over, uh, you know, over promise or uh, under promise and over deliver, you know, in, in these days, you know, they would add three months to it and then it'd still be six months. I, I think things are that messed up. It's not a lack of, well, you could say it is a lack of planning, but it's not a deliberate lack of planning. It's just right. something that happens. It cascades throughout the system. Now, you know, at least I have more faith in receiving the elder stuff than I do in uh, kiss my 2020 goodbye stuff you know I, <laughs> yeah I, yeah i have a bit more right. faith that with a lot more people involved in in the purchasing you know that that it is going to happen yeah it, it's okay to be annoyed you know it's okay to oh, again oh yeah. okay i'm over it <laughs> yeah yeah there you go <laughs> so they did announce another um an, another vinyl release which is going to be shipping <laughs> I wonder when that one's going to ship. Uh, I, I would take all these uh, ship dates for vinyl with a large grain of salt, uh, but they announced Virginia Beach 2004 as the next oh, yeah. off-the-soundboard release, and I'm actually pleased about that, and let me tell you why. 
Okay. Yes, we've all had the instant lives, or many of us have had them that we actually purchased, and they then did become the de facto standards from that tour, with the ex exception of a couple of, uh, I think, union shops uh, that didn't allow that to be recorded or were using different promoters other than Live Nation. I think there were a couple of House of Blues shows. So it, it, they, those weren't, I think, Atlantic City and uh, one other I don't recall off the top of my head. But Virginia Beach was a really cool show. They recorded that and uh, Bristow for mm -hmm. um, the Rock the Nation Live DVD release. Now, I hate that with a passion. Not the music, the editing. It was one of that and Symphony I find very unpleasing to watch. Mm -hmm. um, and I find the the audio track on it a bit tinny and shrill. And it's also interrupted by all those idiotic segments. Well, they're only idiotic because they interrupt the music. I would like them separate. Right. Uh, I wouldn't have a problem with it, but uh, they're not to my taste mixed in that way. So, yeah, we have instant lives. But in Japan when they released Rock the Nation Live. I think it was the following year it came out, so 2005 or 2006. It came with a three-inch bonus CD, which had a more mixed version of that uh, mm -hmm. particular show or songs from that show. I think it had Psycho Circus and King of the Nighttime World from Virginia Beach itself. And that was the first performance on the tour of King of the Nighttime World. Mm -hmm. So they flubbed the beginning. And on the Instant Live, you can hear the flub. The mix is pretty flat because it was uh, console straight onto CDRs for most people and pick it up at the end of the mm -hmm. show. Yep. And for anyone else later, it was still the same master file. These were at least waves rather than MP3s, which were later used on the 2008 recordings. And God, I'm monologuing. I apologize. But it sounded a shitload better on that, you know, properly mixed version, mm -hmm. similar sure. to how we had 2001 um we had the kind of lossy webcast audio that had circulated for years and then were blown away by the sonic clarity of going back to whatever the source they used for that so i'm well thrilled my whole hopes for the off the soundboard series were that it was eventually going to build up you know as many tours as possible now yes duh we would much rather have 70s tours rather than mm -hmm. This one, okay. the, you know, so right. this one being selected to be the second is a bit of a mind boggling, you know, uh, decision. And, and there's no, no doubting that. But I think the sonic clarity of the show will be something that people can appreciate making it the de facto representation from that tour. What's your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm one of those that would like an old, older, a little bit older, not so close to the, the you know, the previous release. And it's only a couple of years, you know, difference. Yeah, it's different. It's not uh, Ace, and there's, you know, Tommy's on it, and and so on. And and I, I know it's it's going to be, you know, sound great and, and everything. But uh, I, I was just hoping for something like, you know, Hot in the Shade that tour, or or something in the '80s. I kind of, you know, I, I it's easy to say the '70s, but uh, I understand that the '70s maybe has some, you know, less available uh soundboards but i they maybe they want to maybe want to save those for those 70s albums box sets you know if they do have something good keep it for that and i would be fine with that um but otherwise you know yeah that's fine i you know i haven't ordered <laughs> i ordered it um so uh it's going to be good if they build on it and again if they go back you know go back in time a little bit too you know even 96 you know the reunion tour they could do that one easily um so i don't know why they didn't maybe it's too easy so uh but yeah i think it's gonna be a good a good listen uh, once we get it yeah now i do take issue with the green vinyl that's i think is a little bit snarky with well, that being not... the, the tour right after peter uh exited the band oh, that was for intentional. All... yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Funny that. You know. Well, wasn't the the you know like the one before, which was the you know known as the what, cat sphincter or or bird? Why why do I get the print? feeling after after I I labeled it the cat sphincter uh, vinyl pressing that that may have they're not going to do anything like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> 
You're not getting any more of that now because Julian's called it Julian names. It. Yeah, I'm sorry. It it didn't look good, and um, I, I think calling it a bone colored was really uh, unfortunate because it was uh, the bone had been slightly processed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. So. So if it sounds like Instant Live, I'll be pissed. Uh, let me put it that way. If it sounds like the the Rock of the Nation bonus live EP, um, which I, I hear people are scrambling to try and find that now because it does sound different. I did put a little 30-second sample up at the beginning of uh, King of the Nighttime World from both of those sources mm -hmm. on the FAQ. So if you want to wade into the, the cesspool and find that post, do, because then you can hear, I think I put it in 320 MP3, just 30 seconds of each. You can hear the flub where it's edited out and then the beginning of the music so you can just get an idea. But I don't want to put too much of it up. I'm sure it's on YouTube anyway. So I, I do have the uh, Instant Live um, CD. I think it's right behind me here um, of the Concord, the Concord show. Yeah, I didn't keep any of mine. You know, I kind of I kind of regret it. I had like I have, yeah. 20 of them or, or so at one point. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I remember it sounded pretty good. I mean, you know, it's straight, you know, they, it's just like pumped on, pumped on, you know, straight from the performance and you know, a half an hour later, uh, waiting outside or whatever it was, um, mm -hmm. it was in your hand and you had this product in the CD. And yeah, so. it, it, it was a great ex experience to come out and be able to buy that. In many ways, it was the best tour for that to be done. Well, because after that tour, there really wasn't much touring until 2008. And mm -hmm. that's when the cracks had really kind of started to appear in Paul's voice. Right. Um, and then, of course, they used the different provider or the different technology and the quality went down. I still have a, uh, a vinyl pressing. Yeah, this won't be the first official vinyl pressing of one of these shows recorded because uh, Download was uh, 2008 was released on vinyl, I believe, uh, the concert live. Um, I've, I've never played mine or opened it. It arrived from England with a uh, split seam. Which oh, yeah. It's just uh, everything I order seems to end up trashed or it, nearly everything. You know, so. they're not going to want to release a, off, off the soundboard uh, that's 2019 to 2022. Or <laughs> it, it, you might as well just say 2019 to 2023. Why bother? So there's uh, there's, mostly there's the Vegas. Same. You've got yeah. Vegas for 2014, Vegas. and I think that's yeah. stretching it as far as they can get away with in terms of live releases now. So, again, I, I think a lot of people are going to not like this simply because it involves Tommy Thayer. There's still a mm -hmm. lot of angst, anger, hate um, with certain segments of the Kiss Army, yeah. or you know, even taking him out of the equation in just that it is not the originals, it's post-2001. At least with 2001, you've got the, you know, kind of the cachet of Eric Singer and Ace Frehley in the lineup for the yeah. tail end of the farewell tour for that leg where, uh, again, Peter had exited the band for contractual uh, reasons. So that had a selling point from that perspective. This one has a tougher selling point. I've upselled it as much as I can for my personal <laughs> excitement. Um, <laughs> right. But uh, that's not going to wash with a lot of the Kiss Army. They're going to say, no, if you're not going back to the 70s on this one, I'm not interested whatsoever. There'll be some saying, well, you could have at least done 1992 or 1990, you know, mm -hmm. and, and got me. Right. Um, but I don't think they're ever going to please everyone. But I think this is actually going to please the least. Oh, maybe. Maybe yeah. it gets it out of the way. Maybe maybe we'll it's see. one. Who, who knows what else is approved? We'll just get that out of the way. Um, yeah. I, I would just hate to see them stumble at release number two if there are more because that decision was made and it, it just seems, again, it, it seems to be right up there with the sort of decision that leads to a show like Paris making it onto the Destroyer box. It, it's it's a, a toe stub. Yeah, that was... Uh... Yeah, that wasn't a good one. And again, <laughs> I have listened to the Destroyer 45 box a few more times since the last time. I'm not counting anymore, and I haven't skipped over it. I play the whole damn box end to end. I don't skip it. I haven't replaced it with the better sounding copy I have, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I, that's because I'm lazy. Let's get into some topics from the board this week, because we don't have a full crew. We haven't planned out uh, an episode. Um, I would like to give some a shout-out to Daniel. 
for bringing the A game to the Carnival of Souls <laughs> episode and knocking it out of the park with his musical illustrations. That was really fun. Um, even if I was begging him to stop at one point, but uh, <laughs> that's only because I look at the clock and I'm like, right. I, I want to keep this to an hour, uh, not not do a concert. But that was really fun, and I'm glad he did. And uh, thank you to everyone who's commented on that. We will, I guess, have to do an episode one of these days where we read some comments from the shows. Um, mm, yeah. yeah, our ABBA one got some a lecture. Oh, I I saw that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's like. Well, we won't go That's okay. All right. So some topics from the board that jumped out at me. I'll start with, if you've got any, you know, you go next. Go uh, you know, what is the best fractured sweet sequel of the Ace Frehley saga? Now, he's done a few. He's Probably done four, right? Five? Has he done five? Uh, oh, maybe I'm missing one. I'm the fractured Mirror. Oh. Fractured Two. Fractured it's... Three. And um, Quantum. Quantum. Quantum Flux. Ah, that's it. I don't even remember Quantum, Quantum Flux. <laughs> that's Back to the Future. Yeah. I mean, what's the best sequel? Sequel. So you're not saying it's the the best of the sequels to the original then. So, no, Which is the only one worthy of the title Fractured in its name, um, you know, compared <laughs> with the original. Because nothing's going to top the original because... Well, the, the, the problem is the second one is too much... I mean, the second one is too much like the first one. Um, and so I kind of give it a, you know, not a high grade. It's, it's fine. It's good. But it's it's too much of copying his own original. Um, I think the um, Fractured 3, or, or what is that? Yeah. The third one off of uh, Trouble Walking. Um, that one I like. The best is a little different. Has a little some good guitar soloing in it, and, and I, I like that one. Um, so I'm just gonna say that's the the best sequel of the original one to the original. Um, the other ones are okay. Um, Quantum is just you know not the greatest, and I I don't even remember the the last one you said. Quantum uh, was it? Quantum Qu fractured quantum. Or, well, fact, no, no, there's another one. The fifth one right? <laughs> okay. I, I'm losing track of all. Uh, there's too many of them, maybe. I'm just, I'm just uh, reading the board as we go, so. Just the third one. The third uh, is the one I, I I like as a sequel to the to the first one. The trouble in the, it's, more, it's originality, I guess. Yeah, well, I'm going to go with the, the first sequel, the one from Frehley's Comet. Yeah, Which because beca because like that, yeah. yeah, because it was an echo of the first, it and is. it was Ace's return after all those years. And in nineteen seventy uh, eighty seven, I was wrapped up in the excitement of him finally putting out an album. Mm -hmm. So I have more again of that kind of fourteen year old emotional connection to that than I later did. I I liked the one on Trouble Walking musically. I think that one's better. And after that, it got a bit like the Jaws movies or. Friday the 13th, it started getting a bit long in the tooth. Oh, not another one. But I, I think to the to the same point, it's like <laughs> expecting Ace not to have a space theme uh, with some of his stuff, just kind of predicted. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's good. It's a good one, too. I just thought, I just didn't, I thought, ah, oh, he's just a little bit too much copying of what he already did on his, you know, 78 solo album so that's the only way only reason i didn't pick it yeah it's not something i've ever tried to play on the guitar either uh none of oh, them no. you know none of them get my you know kind of my musical juices going where i reach for a guitar which is usually a, a good sign of things when they've got that kind of guitar work in them that make me want to figure out they're not what they're doing. head bangers they're not hey head bangers no know? i mean they're they're more <laughs> atmospheric and i think there's yeah. more to the story and ace was very proud of some of the stuff that he was doing um what was it on space invader and i guess even anomaly the amount of tracks that he could use you know you no longer have the limitations of 8 16 24 i mean it's it's all down to how much the software can handle because it's all being recorded that way. So he can do all these different layers and all these textures. And you start getting so many layers in there that I, I wonder how much point there really is to using all those layers. Might as mm -hmm. well go back to just using 16 and make 16 really count. 
even if yeah. you're bouncing down on a couple of them. So, all right. Yeah. Let's see. You got a topic? Uh, there was uh, this top five. I don't think I think we even did this recently. Uh, so someone put top five unmasked uh, Kiss albums. Um, so unmasked Kiss albums uh, is that a studio compilation or live? Okay, so so uh, uh, I don't know. For me, definitely uh, unmasked um, is going to have to be lick it up for sure for myself um, as the top one. I'm gonna, and I'll say revenge to the second and. Oh, live. I, I, well, wait a minute here. Okay, let's start over here. Look it up, number one. Number two, I'll do MTV Unplugged. Then I'll do Revenge. And then I'll do Asylum. And then I'll do Animal Eyes after that. That's the order I'd pick. At least today, that's the order I'd pick. Yeah, that's the great thing about these topics. It does change day to day. All right, yeah. so top, top five on... Unmasked Kiss albums for me today. It's always going to be Asylum number one again. Um, never growing up or emotionally developing. I'm going back to that first point of entry. Yeah. Um, number two, I'm going to go MTV Unplugged as well. Number number three will be Lick It Up. Number four, um, and number four will have to be Revenge, and then number five. Oh. Uh, where it's kind of bottom of the scrap heap here. Um, you know what? I'm going to go with Crazy Nights because I've reappraised it in recent years and I now think that the guitar work really is stellar. Well, it is, yeah. And definitely. E and stellar. equal equal yeah. to revenge in guitar playing, certainly not production, songwriting, uh, or any other metric possible, but Bruce slays it. On that album, yeah, as much as um, you know, he does on Revenge and Carnival of Souls, for that matter. Because I know we oh, yeah. sounded like we were going a bit negative on the whole thing last episode, but it's certainly yeah. in terms of Bruce's performance, Bruce, it's Bruce's album. He's all, you know all over that. So, I mean, last week, yeah, it was kind of a, and that's it. Kind of goes along with the music. We were, it, was, it was kind of a downer. <laughs> episode in a way uh listening you know you're listening to that music and i mean the music is good for the most part um but uh it's just some downer subject it's, you know in or the subject of the songs or subject matter is kind of a downer so that's the drawback on that one and and the only other thing is you know you, you know paul that's not paul stanley um, even though he did write some, you know, some good stuff on there, it's just not him. Um, I know, and then we, I know we got a comment about that, about the disingenuous or, or comment um, that we were talking about, and you know, it was it was a word that started with Mark, and and we kind of said, yeah, I can see what you're saying, but maybe it's not the proper word. It's not disingenuous. It's just not. It's it's more about following the trend, um, and and not being, not being themselves. You know what they do best. Yeah, is just part. You know, party, have fun. You know, and look. You know, look out for. You know, look out for number one or whatever you want to call it. But uh, you know, good time music versus kind of a. Well, they've always kind of been mood. up, anthemic, you know, semi-positive. Oh, yeah. Um, and positive. while they've hopped on a lot of coattails during the 80s, and they also barred a lot at the beginning, don't forget all those ingredients that came from a whole bunch of different sources to make it a, a new so casserole. Yeah. Um, it, it was just one jump too many in, in some ways. They, they landed in the, the wrong zip code. It's like Alice in um, Wizard of Oz rather than Alice in Wonderland. Um, <laughs> right. You don't have upbeat, or at least, and I, again, I listen to Nirvana, and that's as far as I go into the whole Seattle thing. I, I just never got into it past that. Um, mm -hmm. There were never any super positive rallying kind of Seattle albums that I heard 
and I'm, I'm sure people can come up with a list of you know many okay. um, that fly <laughs> right. in the face of that and what some of those bands later developed into but for that time and when it was recorded uh, it was like why are they going into that genre you know it was one thing for bands to dabble with rap or R&B, which is a more natural influence to come out through some of the songs. Um, yeah. You know, it happened to Aerosmith, happened to Kiss, uh, Bon Jovi, those elements started coming in with them as well. Uh, Def Leppard going into like the electronica by necessity and moving away from the hard rock. Oh yeah. You yeah. Know, a, a lot of it happened naturally, but it was like flipping through the yellow pages all right, today, this is popular. This is getting right. a lot of good, positive Yelp reviews. We're going to do uh, this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was just, uh, you know, again, it wasn't a down. I mean, we don't hate that album. I don't hate it. It's, Gene it's, shines. Gene shines. Bruce oh, shines. Oh, yeah. It, it was it's, it, that kind of subject or whatever, the tone is, you know, fits Gene. You know his image and and so on, uh, his style. Um, so yeah, it worked better. So it worked better for half for half of Kiss or or the Gene Gene songs versus the Paul songs. So and again, at least they tried. They tried, they tried, and there's some good stuff. I, I'm not going to throw the album away or anything. No, uh, I, I like most I of that album. Yep. Yeah. Just like with Sonic Boom or Monster, again, it, 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 it's not quitting. It's going back and keeping making music. And yeah, sure, it only got released to keep the bootleggers from doing it. All right, let's uh, move on from. Uh, yeah. Oh, by the way, that's not hating on Carnival of Souls. That's discussing it and having you know various opinions on it. No hate whatsoever. Hate yeah, is only no hate. the song that we discuss, <laughs> not our right. attitude towards it or anyone. Um, change the singer. Now, this is a topic by So Cruel from just yesterday. And what he or she, I'm going to assume it's a he just for the sake of my use of pronouns, uh, which song would you like to have seen a different member sing? One for each original member. Now, his choices mm -hmm. are Strutter to have Peter Chris do it. Mm -hmm. um, I actually agree with that because Peter slayed Strutter in New York City at the cutting room. Which, oh, yeah, uh, he did that, that, right. Absolutely fantastic. But I then think Peter should have been allowed to handle the horn arrangement on it and do it his way. <laughs> That's the thing. I hope they release that one day. Um, he also says, uh, do you love me? Ace, talk to me, Paul Stanley, Ack, um, and Flaming Youth, Gene Simmons. Now, my first one would be a complete cop-out. Okay. And that would that would be for Ace to have sung Cold Gin. Oh yeah. That that really sure. really would have been, you know, the best thing back in the day because I, I don't think his vocals improved that much over the years. That he other than his confidence and having the right uh, person to persuade him to do it in the studio, it, it really would have been nice from day one for there to have been those four voices on the debut album. Mm -hmm. No, I agree with that one. What are some That's, of yours? Because I'm, I'm sticking well, with Strutter and I'll Peter Chris one. as my second. I'll pick one. Okay, this is going to be uh, interesting. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, I, I saw this and I thought the one thing I saw, because uh, I don't like the vocal the way it is currently uh, or on the album, is from the elder, um, Odyssey. I would remove Paul and I would put Gene as the singer of Odyssey. I think Gene would have done it different and done it fantastic. The way Paul sang it is just so wrong. <laughs> it, he should, you know, Paul should have done a more straight, straight voice, um, you know, that we're used to instead of, uh, I don't know what type of voice he was trying to use on that um, you, know, uh, you know tony bennett or i, I, I don't, I don't he think he knew i don't know what he was challenged uh channeling there on that one but uh, uh i would since i don't like that vocal from paul i'm gonna go with gene uh, for odyssey okay all right um is this a cop out if i say paul should have done hard look woman that should never have gone to peter 
Well, it's an easy one. Well, it, it's easy. So maybe but it is a cop out. Go, go listen to Unplugged. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I can understand if it was geared towards a Rod Stewart type song, or whether that story of it being pitched to Rod, you know, has any truth to it, mm -hmm. other than being one of those Kiss Urban Legends. Then, yeah. yeah, it makes total sense to have Peter do it, and it, it's Peter's song. But uh, Paul's performance on Unplugged kind of says that um, it kind of robbed back in the day, you know, by by having Peter do it in that attempt to, you know, piggyback on the success of Beth by having that same voice again doing a similarly out of place type mm -hmm. song. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a cop out. I admit it. No, it's totally right. cop -out. I think it's fine. It makes sense to me. But I guess I'm not uh, allowed to pick Peter, am I? Because uh, it says one for each original. So I've already picked Peter uh -huh. Strutter and Ace for uh, Do You Love Me. So I got to backtrack the hell up to here. Paul and on Hard Luck Woman. Oh, uh, God. What's it, what, what's it going to be? Yeah, you go. Okay. I got one. Um, and I just, oh, um and this is me, maybe think this is a cop out in a way. Um, but I'm going to say uh, Eric Carr will sing Give Me More on Look It Up album. Instead of Gene singing it. I mean, he, he was singing it in original. a concert. What? He's not an original. One for each original member. Ah, oh, see, I, I, I blew that. Then one. again, okay. you're stealing a song from an original All member. All right. Well, well okay. Uh, Oh jeez! I was gonna say, I was gonna say, have no. Let's see. Uh, I gotta do an original. All right. Um, eight. Okay. Um, shock me. I don't think. I don't think uh, Ace Frehley was ready for Shock Me yet. His 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 voice. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give that one to Peter. Wow. Yeah, people are gonna say I'm crazy about that one, but. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do that. I always thought his Ace's voice on there still wasn't wasn't there yet, um, where his voice had matured a lot better by the time uh, a year later, you know, on, on the solo album. So anyway, that's so that's Ace. No, that's Peter. So I've done two. All right, then. Uh... <laughs> God, which ones have I, I picked? I've, I've, I've said Ace for Cold Gin. It's like, oh, God, i got to find something for Gene to say. I said, I, said G, I did Gene and Peter. All right. All right, so I'm giving Christine 16 to Paul. Oh, wow. We're, we're, we're going to turn that into a pop song and have it much more <laughs> upbeat. And Paul's actually sung it before. So Paul sung Deuce as well of Sokka. 1997, when Gene oh, wow. lost his voice, he did a lot of Gene songs. So, um, no, Christine 16. No, it's got to stay Gene. He's going to take Deuce. Because I actually think he did a half decent job when he sung that. Interesting. Okay. Now I got to think about a song to give to Gene. Oh, Christ. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't picked Gene yet. Gene, um, Ooh, that's kind of a tough one. Well, you know what? I'll, I'll do a Paul. I haven't done a Paul, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and this, you're gonna say this is definitely a cop out. Uh, I'm giving. <laughs> well, no, I, I can't do that. I'm not gonna do that. It, it's, it's not even. Doesn't even make sense if I do that. So I'm not even gonna say what I was, gonna, what I was going to say. Um, yeah, it's kind of difficult to, to pick. I mean, you're so. The vocals by a certain member are always ingrained, you know. Um, um, okay. Uh, did I do Ace? I did Ace. No, I didn't do Ace. I took away a song. So, all right. Ace is going to sing, and you might say it's a cop out, uh, Getaway. Actually, I think that's not a half bad if you could do that speed. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully. Well, he... I mean, he, he wrote the song, right? So I'm sure he can do it. I would think he would. Has he ever done that anywhere or any of it? Good question. Did he ever do it like in a club show 
uh, doing some old stuff. I'm, I'm trying to think, you know, most of the time he does stuff these days, it's, you know, Kiss covers, and they're, like, pretty obvious ones. Yeah. Um, I mean, That'd be band, good to I, see him do I, that. I can't remember I don't with, it. with all his guys who sing, you know, when you start thinking about stuff like Flaming Youth or uh, Deuce, Detroit Rock City and all that, you know, he's usually got guys in his band singing a lot of those because uh, they're his breather. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. So anyway, that's it. Uh, I'll do Ace. I mean, it's kind of a cop out, but I think it'd be interesting to hear him sing uh, his own song on that. <laughs> my last one, I'm going to give Mainline to Gene. Oh, really? Well, that might work. Yeah. <laughs> it might. Just to be mean. Just to be mean. <laughs> Mainline out of China. Oh, wait, no, that's a dirty living. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'd give him dirty living. That'd be just as bad. Oh, God. All right. So I haven't done Paul Stanley. Uh, man. Because he can so, sing anything. Uh, that's also, that should be the easiest. Well, I'll, I'll go, and it's, it's, it's going to be another cop out again. Um, kind of. I'm going to go back to the elder again. I'm going to let him sing. A world without heroes. I think it would. He'd pull it off just fine. I think it sound great, actually. I don't think. He'd I mean, he wrote the original la song that that was, you know. No, just the melody. Every bit of my heart, or whatever it was called, right? Well, um, was it wasn't that Benatar or uh, Ronstadt, or that was some of one else's song? No. The lyrics were. Oh, the lyrics. Yeah, I want you only. Is uh. Oh, that, that's an old song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Linda, Linda did a, a remake of that song too. Yeah, yeah. that's what they, they they use that as the kind of. Uh, oh, I knew you melody. when. I knew you when you were. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want you only. Yeah. Total. I have it. Yeah. So I know you do. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that's why you said it. You're not a heathen. You have so, tastes. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'll, I'll pick Paul Stanley on uh, A World Without Heroes. I think it would turn out fine. And so that works out well because I picked Gene to sing Odyssey. I just kind of switched it up. Yeah, I can't even <laughs> remember what I picked now, so there we go. Oh, uh, uh, well. That, that's time. Kind of difficult. Pick. Yeah, and you, you know, that's the fun part about picking some of these topics because I think we give as much thought yeah. as some folk do when responding to them. That, that was a good one, though, um, you know, kind of the C topic because straight out straight out to come up with Peter and Strutter. I mean that that really is a good, good choice. All right, let's go on to another topic. I, I saw a topic today that I was actually I had to be reaching for vinyl. How la how long are the gaps between the songs on Dress to Kill? <laughs> you see that? Yeah, I think I saw that. Um I don't know. Yeah, it made me think, oh yeah, I need to pull, I need to, you know, pull my one of my uh, Just to Kill albums out. and I very nearly did because I wanted to check that. Just when, to see. When, yeah, the yeah. legends of them stretching it out as long as they, they Like could. 10 seconds or something like to, that? Or? And same with Destroyer. And to compare it with the 2014 versions, did they? was it a standard or was there any standard? But you know what? We've got people who count the cymbal hits during shows uh, to compare how many times <laughs> Eric Singer hits the cymbals on a particular song versus Eric Carr. I just don't want to be that guy. So... Um, I respect you if you want to, and we'd love to know the findings. Um, so report back on the FAQ when you finish counting them. I'm sure someone's willing to take up that task for the benefit of the KISS Army. Not me, though. Someone must, yeah, probably knows it. Um, I don't, but... Uh, and I say yeah. that without any sense of, uh, you know, I'm not mocking in the slightest because some of the stuff, I'm the guy who unglued covers to find out and verify the printing plant shit that uh, we wanted to know. So I'm not going to mock you for counting symbols. I'm not going to mock you for timing the gaps between Kiss songs on vinyl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as insane yeah. as it sounds. Yeah. All right, let's so. go. Uh, let's let's go there. Will the Australian tour happen in March 2022? What's your thoughts? Well, you know, with all the stuff going on right now still, and, and uh, 
I know they're having the, they're still having the Australian Open, which you've heard all the news about, Djokovic, Djokovic right? Yeah. Um, all that stuff. Um, it sounds like it's the, the that tournament's going to still happen. Um, so based on that, even though Australia's pretty darn strict, uh, I think they'll maybe still do it, and maybe by March things will start hopefully calming down uh, for Omicron or whatever uh, by that time. Uh, kind of hit our peak in January here, and then it'll, hopefully the, the line will start descending. So I, I'm hoping, I mean, it doesn't look good right now in my mind, but I think it could happen still, so I'm going to say yes. Yeah. I hope it happens for the Australians because yeah. they have waited and waited and waited. But you know what? They have waited for so many other things. They have had the same impact, the same pain. They have had much stricter restrictions than a lot of Western countries have had. They have had and managed to maintain fewer deaths, infections. Uh, they've managed to get more vaccinations out there. They have many of the same problems that affect the U.S., Britain, other countries in Western Europe. Um, I hope whatever they do, they do what's right for them. It, you know, it's very easy to criticize other countries without listening, uh, living there, without knowing the culture. I've not been to Australia. Yeah, I've known a lot of Aussies, um, and they've all been sensible people. So I, I just... I'm, I'm sure they're going to do what's sensible. The Australian Open's an interesting thing because I think a lot of that's, you know, political bullshit as usual. Um, something got messed up with Djokovic, and I can't stand the guy. I uh, am not a fan of his whatsoever. Yeah. I am on Team Switzerland for tennis these days since Andy Murray's um, just not back to form. But I, it really sounds like a lot of things got screwed up with his situation. But I'm not going to do a whole lot of reading on the subject. I, I just hope we had Kiss Tour in the United States during Delta. And both Gene and Paul got infected. And uh, we have no idea whether Fran right. died as a result of COVID. His family asked that not to be, you know, put down. It's close, um, yeah and that's a private matter for them. However, mm -hmm. if Gene and Paul both got sick, I do question how many fans got sick or worse or infected people. And while vaccination is a personal choice, it has a knock-on effect for other people. I know for a fact, though, that the cost of tickets is an economic factor that many people would not be willing to give up a ticket if the tour was happening and to go. Um, I ended up losing $2,500 by not going to Mountain View, where I had yeah, front yeah. row. You had a great time. Um, I know. You missed know, you I had, there. Yeah, yeah. I, I missed it as well. I lost 2500 bucks on that. Um, yeah. And that is what it is. But, you know, people got to make choices for themselves and for their own circumstances. And hopefully have no regrets for the, you know, at the end of the day. I don't want another fucking different Australian tour poster with dates that didn't happen, you know. <laughs> right. Phil, thank you for the posters, buddy. Uh, I appreciate it. I've got two of them now. I don't want a third variant of a tour. I want Australia to get to say farewell to Kiss properly. And by that time... I'm sure they're going to be ready for it, but so many tours have already been canceled. I mm -hmm. don't see it happening. I hope I'm wrong, and I am hope it can be done safely for the band, the crews, the attendees, anyone involved in those decisions. And I hope the Australian government continues to be strict as fuck, but also that they communicate what the expectations of people coming in country are so that you don't have a repeat of the Djokovic um, embarrassment. Yeah. Because it's an yeah. embarrassment for that to happen, to, to invite people to say they're cleared and then have that happen, regardless of any of the factors that play into it. Don't let yeah. them even get on the freaking planes and do that god-awful flight down under before doing so. Yeah. And if you don't do something, I, you know what? I think Universal should be getting product in fucking production in Australia for the Aussies right now. Whether or not the tour happens, there should be a tour edition of something special for the Aussies for being so fucking patient waiting. That's true. That's true. 
And, you know, going back to that Mountain View concert, that was the second show right after Gene and Paul both had exactly. COVID. And uh, <laughs> I understand why you didn't go. Um, and uh, and it was the second show. I was kind of worried about it, but uh, fortunately I, I lucked out. You know, well, I was vaccinated, of course, but still, you can still get the stuff. So, um, yeah, who knows? I mean, I was right up against the stage and they're, they're singing and sweating and well, I, again, it goes back to March 2020 for my choice that yeah. I don't know if I got infected at Oakland or, oh, for right. God's sake, if I was infected at Oakland. You, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if anyone can understand what it's like to feel like I was backstage before we were doing masks and shit around yeah. the band members. That is a freaking... <laughs> pretty heavy load of uh baggage right. to kind of yeah. weigh so right. when they went back on tour i felt they went back too soon and i understand them wanting to get the tour done i understand that they have business yeah. commitments and other th factors that come into play outside of any emotional response but i had covid before there were vaccines and i know a lot of people have a lot of you out there will have had it a lot of you will have had it and had no big deal but I, I don't want to die from COVID. I want to die from something more exotic. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think they'll still, hopefully they'll do the show for Australians and, and things, like I said, will calm down with the virus a bit and allow that to happen. All right. Uh, I had another one, and this is just something I saw, and it just reminded me of something, which, which is someone is asking about the value of the Kiss leather army leather jackets, uh, and many people I don't know if everyone's seen them, but you know they they came out about during the convention. Ninety five were they the time? ones with the on the back? Yeah, yeah, they had the they had the middle finger, and I would have bought that originally. weren't they like seven fifty to begin with? It was it was something like that, five hundred to seven fifty, somewhere in that you know area, and I was really considering buying it. But that middle finger on the original jacket, I looked at that and I'm like, I'm not going to buy that. You know, we'll wear that around. You know, that's just I I didn't understand the middle finger thing that they had to you know do that. And obviously they <laughs> they removed that. I mean, they did that with revenge, you know, of course, in the in the show. But uh, I, I just, you know, who are you giving the finger to um, on it? Um, you know, that reminds me of 1991. I went to Boston and I was walking around with my jean jacket, had a union flag on the back of it. That did not go down well. That is the equivalent oh. of the middle finger on, uh, <laughs> <laughs> on that kiss jacket. Yeah. So. I, I know later, a little bit later on, a couple of years or a few years later, they 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 made it into a fist and got rid of the middle finger. Um, but by that time, they lost me, and I, and it and then it was just at that point, it was just too expensive. I just thought, uh, forget it. Um, yeah. So, I, but the value of the jacket, I don't know. It's probably still worth you know oh, five hundred. I don't think. It's very, you know, it's, it's. I don't think it's inexpensive. Uh, if you find it on eBay, it's, you're going to pay a good, good amount of money. I don't think it's going up in value or anything like that. <clears throat> Excuse me, um, but I think it's pretty just a steady value, assuming it's still in the pretty good shape. All right. So let's see. When was this? This came out on uh, Friday, so new release from Classic 78. That's oh, yeah. the, uh, the band that does new music in the style of KISS 1977-78. And uh, they have a new yeah. CD out. It's called Phantoms. I've heard it. It made me smile. That's, uh, that's a key. So check that out at Classic 78, and that's classic with a K, 78.com up on Amazon, digital platforms, and all that do, do support people who make new music. Uh, there's also the other project going on, which I can't find, a Car Jam. Um, so oh, I'll, Car Jam. Yeah, yeah, if I remember to put a link in, I will. Uh, bought anything new recently? 
you know, any new musical orders in in the last ten, well it's about 10 days since we did our last episode the only thing that i've gotten um at least kiss wise musical musically well it's not even music it, you know there's those discs um from the kiss cruise did you get one i have a i have it i can show you it yeah will you? Uh, um it's 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 one of the gold ones oh um, sweet I got it right when it right when the Kiss Cruise just ended. I mean, it was like one of the first ones out there. So I've seen a lot go for. I got a good deal on it because there's a lot of them now that are way more. <laughs> it's going way more pricey. Let me let me grab. Yeah, it. I've had a couple. I've had the uh, well, the Creatures of the Night one. I, I had. Oh yeah. I sold. So while you dig it out, let me tell folk about the other new release that is now oh. out, and this is of course Car Jam 21 EP. Um, Eyes of Love, Lover All I Can, Can You Feel It, and Snowblind. Uh, the EPs on this um, tribute project is, uh, you know, clearly to our tribute to Eric Carr, and two are some fun songs. Um, to perform as well but you can find that online go over to kissrelatedrecordings.com um, get, get a lot more information than I'm able to come up with I think they've got some videos out as well on YouTube but you know quite a few tribute things going on at the moment which is really neat to see so check out all that stuff all right let's see let, let's see the goodies okay so here it is I'll pull it out this is a a cover. I guess they gave. It's gonna be noisy pulling this off here, but they gave gold and then platinum kind of colored ones. And yeah, I think it I depended guess, on your rank in the Kiss Army or something. Your rank or how many times you've uh, been on the you know the cruise. So all right. So oh that's all right. Here's the back of it. That looks. I, I like that. The cover. That's the, really The cover's cool. pretty nice, you know. That'll end up on a bootleg, no doubt. The problem is, yeah, special edition. Uh, let's pull it out here. All right. I think it's just a regular old sleeve, white sleeve in there. Yeah. Or it's, it's not even like a sleeve, but it's kind of paper. But it's not white. It's it's kind of cool. Holy shit. That actually looks fantastic. There you go. That would actually make a, a nice custom... Award um, type thing. Yeah, yeah. So with the different center ring, I love that design. Those signatures look great. They're etched, they'll, aren't they? Yeah, they're etched. Uh, and actually, you feel them. It feels almost like it erased. Actually, but uh, yeah, it's it's not bad. It's it's kind of. I thought it was different and kind of cool. So, uh, you know, we got a decent price for it. What's on so. the flip side? The flip is just the same thing, but I think it's the same look. It's same shiny. Color. I like it's it. Just, it's very shiny, yeah. Very shiny. So it's the same kind of uh, center label on the other side, just no uh, signature. It kind of reminds me of the old Creature of the Night etched, you know, that single that had the the signatures yep. in it. The, the UK yeah. etched autograph. I have that. I have yeah. that. Yeah, I do have that. So yeah, I thought, well, I might, I might even actually frame it up. You know, and I thought it might look kind of cool sitting on that. The... That would look very cool framed. What a great, great um, Kiss Cruise premium gift compared to those stupid fucking trading cards they did for my cruise. <laughs> Is that what they did on yours? Yeah, they they weren't even ready. They came oh, in no. the mail weeks later. Well, you know. Again, I know some people really like them. I couldn't put them up on eBay fast enough. I, I got rid of mine. It's like, what the hell do I do with these? You know, like smudgy signatures on it. Um, they've done some very cool stuff. They've done some stuff that doesn't appeal to me, but that I see ha having uh, Kiss merch possibilities outside of that. And it looks absolutely fantastic, well executed, nicely designed. What a, yeah. what a very cool thing. I You know, I'm excited. Yeah. And I don't... I don't get it. I don't buy it. That's the only thing I got from that cruise uh, that you know I bought from somebody. And like I said, the creatures one. I I have that one. I bought that from that other cruise uh, when they did the creature stuff. And then I don't have the rock and roll all night one. That vinyl. 
That's the what one. Was that, that, was that the have, brown one? The brown it's cover? It's kind of a brown one. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I had that. That one I don't have. Um, that one, if I can get a, a deal on it, I might, you know, pick that one up. But that's the only one I don't have uh, in the, you know, the vinyl looking type stuff. Those play, those two prior ones. But this one looks like it plays, but it doesn't play. I, I'm I not going to put my, try I'm drop my No, that, that'll trash uh, whatever. Trash my order fun or whatever. Yeah. Needle. No, how, how cool to get excited about something like that, even, you know. I'm sure that a lot of people on the cruise were thrilled when that happened. So that's oh, really yeah, nice, sure. especially on the plague cruise to, uh, well, I'm not going to call it the plague cruise. I didn't hear of any, uh, breakouts on there. Oh, well, that's true. Yeah. No yeah, one, the, I didn't they, hear they any ran, complaints They ran a it. clean ship for all I heard, which is nice. My sister-in-law was just on a cruise down to Mexico and they weren't allowed to dock. Oh, really? Uh -oh. Yeah. That's a bummer. Yeah, there were like 10 crew and 8 guests infected, and they were like, no hablo. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a bummer. Oh, yeah. Well. All right, so that's some randomness. Hopefully we'll have a, a more complete crew back next week. Maybe we'll even do a topic. I do want to do, we're going to be doing a Wasp episode next week because obviously Wasp has now announced uh, U.S. dates on their uh 40th anniversary type tour which uh got my tickets today to the regency i had to buy a pair so i've got an extra um <laughs> oh, figure out what i'm going to yes. do with that i never got to see wasp back in the day and obviously we've been doing the mm -hmm. wasp podcast on the look it's rock and roll podcast we're up well our next one will be what are we up to we're up to dominator finally got through neon god so we're at the tail end, but we've got 10 episodes that you can go and check out. Andy, Bill, myself, I think Brant Meredith did the first one with us. Uh, we just run through the catalog and talk about Wasp. It's one of those things. They open up for Kiss on some tours, which was fun. Oh, and speaking of that, let me show you some. Uh, keep talking about that tour. All right, so Wasp, Wasp. Uh, the Wasp episode that we're going to be doing, we're going to be talking about the uh, 40th anniversary okay. tour mixed in with some Lyceum 84. I think we'll have that playing in the background, commenting on it while we do it. A little break before we get into the final run of Dominator, Golgotha, and uh, I always forget what the, recent, the other one, Babylon. There we go. Because we've only got three studio albums left in the catalog. Then we may go back and do stuff like The Sting. We shall have to see. I'll see how long I can stretch this out while Ken's doing what he's doing. All right, it. Ken, what do you have? You found right. it. I finally found it after digging through. You finally uh, found I, your way to your stuff. I need to frame it, though. But you're speaking of, you know, Wasp, Kiss. And, so this is the, the uh, one from the, the Cow, Cow Palace uh, Very poster. nice. Or, 85 uh, or 80, that's is that 85 or 86 that was 85 i believe yeah uh yeah it was 85 i saw them um yeah finally so, yeah that was the time i saw wasp so the only time i saw wasp was on that show with it and they, they were great it was a great opening band i was so happy that they were opening because i was uh really into wasp at least the first you know like few albums the very first three albums so yeah those, um, those three albums stand up well to the test of time and you know oh, yeah, yeah. We've, we've got a little bit off topic at the end of this show but you know go back and listen to you know some people call the first album wasp some call it wind winged assassins you know it, it's got a lot of just good songs on it go check out some rick fox podcasts uh you know. <laughs> yeah. i like last command particularly and i i still oh, I love it you know always a fan of electric circus yeah it was getting a little bit you know more yeah. just blacky and kind of poppy and but you know all through the catalog obviously i've stuck with that band all the way through their catalog uh with very few times that i've had to go back and catch up on albums that i've skipped or not not uh known about there's been a few but you know for the most part you know still not black enough is still one of their top albums for me mm. personally just because, you know, happy memories from Glasgow when I rediscovered it and them. All right, that's it for this week. So for Ken and myself, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for spending time listening to the Kiss FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. 
If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.